Morning, afternoon, evening people, whatever time it is whenever you're tuning in. So I haven't done a cooking video for a bit, so it's good to be back in the kitchen. Uh, anyway, I've had a request from one of my viewers, Wazza. Now Wazza's a Yorkshireman. He wants me to do a Yorkshire pudding with a cottage pie in it. He says, it's in a photo, looks really good. So that's what I'm going to try. Never done it before, so it's going to be a learning experience for me, just as much as it is for you. So, let's give it a go. So ingredients, I will put the ingredients up on the screen for you in a minute. So for the Yorkshire pudding itself, we need flour, eggs, milk. I'll go into quantities a bit later. Now this recipe is going to be to feed two, so you can scale it up or down depending on how many people you want to feed. So we're going to use, we're going to cheat, use cottage pie mix, one onion, some peas, frozen, we use about half a pack of mint, so there's 500 grams there. We're going to use 250. For the topping, potatoes, butter and cheese. The butter is just to make the mash nice and buttery and creamy. Right, so the first thing we're going to do then, get the potatoes peeled. And get those on to boil. Now we're going to go on to the filling. So I've got a drop of um, vegetable oil in the pan there. Straight in with the mint. We're going to brown that off. Obviously remembering if you have such raw meat, wash your hands. Even that mint, got even one chopped onion. Now if you wanted to, you could add some garlic at this point, however I'm not, because Teddy will be having some of this, and garlic is not good for dogs. And in with that, some of our frozen peas. Once that needs to brown off. I've got a cut of thyme mix in 100 percent of water, the whole packet, so it's going to be very from this. So put that straight in there. Bring that to the boil. Now I'm going to do this cottage pie filling, is I want this to be nice and thick. I don't want to make the Yorkshire pudding soggy. So we're going to simmer this for about five minutes just to really thicken it up. Okay, that's been simmering away for about five minutes now. And you can see how thick that is, the consistency of that. So that's gonna do us. So we'll put that to one side. Now this is the dish we're doing it in. What I'll do is take a bit of sunflower oil, or any kind of vegetable oil. Drop of oil in there. And make sure the whole surface of this is coated in the oil as we don't want it to stick. We're we'll doing now is fire that in the oven at about 200 degrees just to preheat. Okay so what we're going to now is our Yorkshire pudding mix. So Yorkshire pudding mix, the way I do it is equal parts egg, milk and flour. So the first thing I do is I crack the eggs in there. Scales are zeroed. So that eggs, two, two, two eggs there, 100 grams. So to that now, we're gonna tear the scales, and we'll add 100 grams of milk, or well, thereabouts, doesn't have to be exact. And that is exact. 100 grams of milk, give that a whisk together. Turn the scales and into that now we're going to fire 100 grams of plain flour. Now 
There you are, we're exact again, exactly 100 grams then. Just give that a good whisk, whisk that together. You don't actually need to use a whisk for this, just a fork will do. You want to whisk it so you get it this kind of consistency. Now here's the conundrum of this recipe. What I want to do is I want to put the Yorkshire pudding, mix in here, cook the Yorkshire pudding just long enough so it stays structurally sound enough to put the filling in, to put it back in the oven. So I don't want to overcook the Yorkshire pudding. So what we're going to do, fire our Yorkshire pudding mix in there. I'm going to fire that in the oven now. I'm going to keep checking it until I think it looks, looks strong enough to put the filling in. In the meantime, while the Yorkshire pudding is in the oven, we're going to do our potatoes. Now I've got a potato ricer. If you haven't got one of these, get one. Really good investment. So that potato ricer, you get a perfect mashed potato every time. So what we're going to do now to that potato, we're going to add some grated cheese and some butter. While it's still piping hot, give that a good mix. We want to get the cheese and the butter mixed in nicely with that potato. Okay, so that Yorkshire pudding is not playing, it's not risen the way I wanted it to rise. I wanted it to rise around the edges and leave me a gap in the middle. It hasn't done it, but we're going to crack on anyway. So I'm going to take the fill in. What I'm trying to do is leave a bit of a gap at the edge for the Yorkshire pudding to hopefully rise. around the filling. And then on the top with our mashed potato. I'm going to try and make this look nice. I'm just going to put some fork scores on top of that mash. And on top of there with some grated cheese. Pop that back in the oven now for about 10 minutes. And there we go. That hasn't quite turned out how I wanted it. I wanted the Yorkshire pudding to rise around the edge. You can see it has a little bit, but not to the extent that I wanted. So let's get that out on the chopping board, cut into that and take a look. I got it out onto the chopping board. Unfortunately, it did fall apart a little bit. As you can see there. Cottage pie in a Yorkshire pudding. Good to go. If you like that video, if you want to see more cooking videos, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Cheers, have a good night.